Hey, it's Chris with Maynard Dog Training Solutions. I'm down here at Dogtopia in Warwick, Rhode Island. So before we even start, take a look over at this uh, little sign right here. If you like cute dog pics, because we all do too, go ahead and follow Dogtopia on Instagram. And of course, you can find my page in there as well, Maynard Dog Training. So today we're going to talk about uh, potty training and potty training solutions. The biggest thing here is uh, this can work for either puppies or older dogs. It doesn't matter what your what your issue is as far as potty training goes. Um, this is for this covers all all dogs uh, in general. Um, the one thing that we, it doesn't cover is anything any dog that has a medical issue. So you want to make sure that your dog doesn't have a medical issue. Uh, most of the time, puppies don't. They're actually just learning how to potty train. But make sure your dog doesn't have any medical issues that that uh, keep it from actually learning and, and doing the proper things um, as far as training. So the first thing that we want to do is, and it's the same as any, any training that we do, is get control of the food. The thing here is, and the reason for getting control of the food is so that you have a consistent potty schedule. So if I set up my dog to eat its breakfast and its dinner, I have a pretty consistent bathroom schedule that's going to happen. Rather than if my dog is just eating randomly throughout the day or eating three or four meals a day, I can't really predict when the dog is going to go to the bathroom. So we got to really get control of the food schedule. There's different ways of doing that. One is you can easily just put the bowl of, of food down, and I mix water with it, so it has a little bit more weight to it once it goes inside the dog's belly, so that it's more likely the dog is going to go to the bathroom after it eats. Put the food down in a bowl. they got 10 minutes to eat it, and that's it. It comes up. And then we go to dinner, and the same thing happens. So now we're getting a consistent... Um, bathroom schedule going because we have a consistent food schedule and they're more likely to eat or excuse me they're more likely to go to the bathroom when they have that full stomach so you want to set this up so the dog can actually pass and get this going so that's the first part next one is when you bring your dog out to go to the bathroom you want hundred percent supervision and to do that you need to have a leash on the dog yes you physically have to walk outside with your dog on leash regardless of the weather Welcome to New England, we get all the weather. You're gonna bring them outside and you're just gonna walk them around. And you're gonna keep them moving until they actually go to the bathroom. You're not gonna let them sniff around, you're not gonna let them play. You don't just open the door and let them go run outside in the backyard. You have to physically move them around and make them lose all those other distractions out in the yard so that they're only concentrating on the things they feel physically, which is gonna be the peeing and the pooping. So on that note, you're gonna to wanna to bring out some treats with you. When the dog goes pee, you want to reward immediately after the pee, immediately after. Same with poop. Once the dog goes poop, you want to reward immediately after the poop. You also want to talk, kind of talk them through it. You know, good pee, eventually as you're talking to them, further down the road, a week, a month, however long it is, you can actually command them to go out and go to the bathroom on command because you've been talking to them while they're doing it and they start to learn what the words are. So. The reason why you reward immediately is because that's the whole point of, or excuse me, that's the, the drive for the dog. They're trying to get that dopamine level. So when I reward a dog for going pee, it's going to start to think in its mind, if I put it outside, I get a reward. If I put the poop outside, I get a reward. Now, some of you are already doing it really, really far off, and it's a little different. What you don't want to be doing is letting your dog go out to the bathroom and rewarding them after they come inside. The dog is getting rewarded for coming inside. They're not getting rewarded for going to the bathroom in that case. So I hope you understand that. The dog is going to legit go outside, play, and hurry up and come back inside because they know they're going to get a treat. And then they're going to end up going to the bathroom inside your house. So you want to try to stay away from that and reward them outside immediately. Being sure that you're bringing your dog out in all the weather. You know, again, New England, we have all the different weathers here. We have rain. We have hail. We have snow. We've got it all. you got to get out there and bring your dog out in the weather. Oh, my dog doesn't like the rain. Your dog doesn't like the rain because you didn't make them stand out there. You actually let them back in. So again, same thing with the snow. It's too cold. My dog doesn't like it out there. Surprise, surprise. It's because you didn't make them go out there in that snow or the rain. So you got to make sure you get all the weathers out there. Get out there. Get with your dog. It's going to take you a couple of times in the bad weather. And you're going to have this potty training done for the rest of their lives versus not having anything done. So... On that note, when we come back inside, if your dog is, is soiling anywhere in the house, whether pee or poop, you want to restrict them in the area they're allowed to move around in. Now, a lot of us, we have these open floor plans. You've got to find a way to restrict it. 
I will normally keep a dog in a uh, bathroom or in a kitchen or something where there's tile or linoleum. It's a lot easier to clean up. So kitchen is really good because it's usually a smaller room and I can keep an eye on the dog and I'm cooking a lot of, a lot of things that we do with our families is in the kitchen anyway. So we can keep them uh, occupied and keep them on us and uh, keeps away from any um, social anxiety or separation anxiety that they might have. So restrict them to one room, put gates up, put some corrals up, move some furniture, block a doorway, make it so it's a smaller room if you have an open floor plan, but make it work. Um, so with that, if your dog is soiling, let's say now we have restriction to a kitchen and we know the dog is going in three different spots perhaps, maybe it's two, whatever it is, we're gonna put some pads down. I like to use the uh, washable pads. I don't like to use the disposables because the dog tends to chew them up, rip them up, tear them up and all that kind of stuff. So. It's your choice, which, whichever one you use. I like the washable ones. And what I'll do is I'll remove the poop for sure every time. The pee, if I can stand the smell of the pee, I'm gonna leave it there. That way the dog is attracted to go back to the pad. Now the pad is just a marker for the dog to kind of get in this area. The dog isn't always gonna hit the pad and they're not doing it on purpose. They're not doing it to piss you off. They're not doing it to make you mad, anything like that. They come, they smell, and they put it wherever they're at. And it just so happens it's just off the pad. We go, oh, they're doing it to make me mad or they're doing it to get on my nerves. That's not the case. Remember, their brain is all about survival, not about what right and wrong. And you have to kind of go with that. Believe me for that one. Um, so what we're going to do is if I catch him going on the pad, sometimes in the middle of a, a peeing or pooping, you can kind of noise him out of it or bang something or a clap or something like that. And it gets him to stop. And then it can physically pick them up or move them so that we can get it outside. However, if they're peeing or pooping on the pad, I want that. Go ahead and reward them for peeing and pooping on the pad. Now we have control. So here's we, here we go with the control. If I have two or three spots that the dog is using in the kitchen, what I can do is over time, maybe a couple days, of I know that they're going on the pads now. I'm gonna start moving them so that they're closer to each other, maybe by six or eight inches. And the next day I'm gonna go a little bit closer and a little closer and a little closer until I have just one pad left in that room. And then what I'm gonna do is start moving that pad towards the exit door that the dog will be using to go to the bathroom. So if your dog goes outside in the backyard, you might wanna use the back door or a back patio door. If that's the door you're always going out. If you're bringing it towards the front door and your dog never goes out the front door, then what good is it, right? So you gotta make sure you're using something that's logical in the way that you're going with the dog. So eventually you get it to the door. Now you can put it outside and they'll be targeting it outside. And then what I do is I'll actually fold it up in smaller pieces. So if I have a big two foot by three foot pad, I'll fold it in half, then I'll fold it in half and then I'll just get rid of it. Because by that time you've rewarded the dog enough outside when they go that I don't have to worry about them anymore. So um, once you've moved it outside, you know, you're there. You have nothing else. You can now open up the other uh, other rooms and do the same thing. So maybe you open up to a second room and you keep everything else gated off and you just keep going with that until you have the entire run of the house and the dog is completely potty trained. You need to make sure you have a lot of patience for this. It's going to happen, especially with a puppy. They're going to have accidents, no reprimands, no yelling at the dog, no sticking your dog's face in the puddle or the poop or whatever it is, or giving them a long lecture. None of that works. They've already been rewarded for going to the bathroom. And that reward is simply relief. Just like humans, we get done go to the bathroom, we're done, it's good. You go and reprimand a dog after the fact, you're reprimanding for a dog just walking around the house, and guess what? That's what they think they're getting yelled at for. So you need to make sure you keep the reprimands out of it. It doesn't matter what you're doing or what you're saying to them, it's not gonna matter. So that is pretty much all of the uh, potty training tips and tricks. The thing with the scheduling is you can have a schedule as far as, you know, I want to bring my dog two hours, three hours, every four hours, whatever it may be. You don't necessarily have to keep to that schedule because what's going to happen is your dog is going to depend on you to say it's 10 o'clock, it's 12 o'clock, it's 2 o'clock. And if you miss it by a minute, you're going to be off because now the dog's going to go to the bathroom because you were supposed to take them out. But what also happens is we can't predict how much water they're going to drink. We don't know how much they have to go. They missed it a little bit and they didn't get it. So... I try to keep away from that constant, consistent uh, hourly um, break. I know that around the time of eating, they're gonna have to go, especially if I'm mixing water with the food. I know that after food, they're gonna have to go. And then maybe I'll go 
another three or four hours, and I'll bring them out. You wanna make sure you're really paying attention to your dog's signs as far as, am I walking around, am I circling, am I starting to squat, am I looking for a place to hide? You know, you wanna keep control of that stuff with the dog, so. Um, on that note, that's pretty much all of it. You need to do all of these things. There's no order to them, but you need to do all of them. Otherwise, it's not gonna work for you. If you miss one, you're gonna to have to start it all over again and put them all and implement them all in place. So that's it for potty training. Uh, your puppy or your older dog. This is Chris signing off from Dogtopia.